Welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of the Star Citizen Alpha Boot Camp. Today we are talking about the economy of Star Citizen. Remember, this is a companion to the Tales of Citizens podcast, so if you'd like to hear us discuss these topics in more detail, head over to talesofcitizens.com. This week, I'm going to start with a quote directly from the official economy article released by the dev team last July. In my opinion, this quote best summarizes exactly what Star Citizen is. In order to create a fairly stable economy, and yet one that is still able to be affected by player actions, the economy in Star Citizen is built to represent millions of entities, whether players or NPCs, that work together to move resources and finished goods from one end of the galaxy to the other. Miners and other resource gatherers work to extract basic resources from the available supply. Traders collect those goods and deliver them to other places. Escorts protect those convoys from harm, while pirates try to attempt the opposite. Refineries turn the raw goods into processed goods, and factories collect these processed goods to build the finished products that are in demand on worlds throughout the Star Citizen universe. These goods are not assigned an arbitrary fixed price at each location. Instead, we are creating an organic system that keeps track of how much of everything is available, how much of it is needed, where it is needed, and what individuals are willing to pay for it. Now, because the simulation reflects a real population going about their business, if a player is not available to carry ore from Ellis to Terra, an NPC cargo hauler will step in and run the route. If escorts are needed, and players are unavailable to escort the transport, the NPC pilots will escort the vessel. Pirates, too, might be NPC or player ships. Meanwhile, the nodes that are producing, refining, and consuming these goods are run by non-player characters as well. As players progress in the game, they may choose to purchase some of these facilities and take over the day-to-day oversight. Business goes on, and players step in wherever they wish to take part. Now, based on that description, there are two major differences between Star Citizen and other MMO economies. And the first one is that the economy is primarily run by NPCs, non-player characters. So when nobody, no players are in a system, there are NPCs in that system taking jobs, moving things from place to place, and becoming pirates, etc., etc. When players move in, they take the place of the NPCs. They sort of finish their job and despawn. So that's a really intriguing concept. It means the economy's always going, whether there are players there or not, which means you don't have to fill up every single system evenly and perfectly. Players can jump in and jump out and the system keeps going. That's brilliant. Now, the other major difference is that you'll be able to buy and sell factories and refineries and these things they call nodes in the economy that sort of work as investments. So if there's a refinery that's not making a lot of money because there's not enough people bringing ore to it, and then your corporation discovers a new mining belt in the area, you will buy that factory quick at a very low cost because it's not profitable. Then it will become profitable as you start to exploit that new mining area. Opportunities like that just sound amazing. The star citizen economy is made up of nodes. Now a node is an abstract entity that accepts one or more input goods and creates one or more output goods. On screen now you can see a sample of the different types of nodes in Star Citizen. This of course is not a complete list. Nodes have the following characteristics. Node inputs, node storage, and node outputs. Node inputs, obviously, is what it needs in order to produce its outputs. And the storage represents how much space it has on site in order to store the raw materials and the produced good. Now, the speed at which a node operates is affected by worker morale, equipment quality, and the amount of equipment. So if you own a factory, you are going to have to concern yourself with some of these things. You could try to buy better equipment on the open market to improve the efficiency of your factory. You could improve the amount of equipment, essentially making the factory bigger so it produces more stuff at the at the same time. Or perhaps you build an entertainment node nearby so your workers get higher morale. 
Something to keep in mind, even though an individual factory is a node and an individual refinery is a node, if you put them together, they are now a single larger node, especially if they're interconnected. So the refinery might accept raw ore, process it into metals, and then the factory accepts metals and outputs widgets. Now, these two things together as a singular node accept raw ore and output widgets. So in this way, an entire moon or a planet or a space station could be its own node. And based on the various nodes that are on that entity, it's going to have its own inputs and outputs. For example, what you're seeing on the screen right now might represent a small mining colony on a moon or an asteroid somewhere. It accepts food, water, building materials, and machinery, as well as luxuries and contraband, and it outputs widgets. Now, this might get its food, water, building materials, and machinery, and luxuries and contraband from a planet nearby that itself is producing those things, and then there was a healthy trade back and forth between the mining colony and the planet. Now, I know some of you guys are saying, listen, I don't want to be a mogul. I don't care about this economy stuff. I just want to kill me some pirates. Well, it's still important to understand the economy because it will have a direct impact on your play experience. If parts didn't get through to the missile production factory, its inventory will be low and the prices will be high when you come to restock after fighting off those pirates. So if your corporation tends to hang out in a specific area or you've staked off some area as your territory, it's in your own best interest to make sure all the weapons factories and ammunition factories are well stocked with their raw materials so that you can always resupply at the lowest cost possible. So now that you know how nodes work, how does one go from raw materials to Hylar 5 assault laser? Well, what you can see on your screen here is an example of how you do just that. You start with the resources, in this case ore and hydrocarbons, and you slowly process them into tier 1 goods, then tier 2 goods, and then tier 3 goods, and finally you put them together to make a working product. Now, looking at this, you'll notice that all the different lines kind of show things going from one place to the next. Now, the line could represent, for example, a player bringing the previous good to the next stage where it's getting converted. Or it could just represent uh, a factory on the same node as a refining station. So, for example, the ore gets turned into minerals. That yellow line where ore gets turned into minerals could be a player taking the ore from an asteroid, bringing it to a refinery, and then it gets turned into minerals. And then the minerals get turned into processors and optics. Now that might mean that the minerals had to get transported to another place in order to get converted into processors or optics. Or maybe processor plant and an optics plant are on the same planet, moon, space station as that mineral refining area. So these lines represent a player bringing the goods from one place to another for a profit or a factory being right next door and just taking the goods and converting them right away. And as you can see, just in this one example, there are going to be a lot of lines. It's very unlikely that all of this entire production capacity is on a single node. There will only be so much space in each city, at each planet, at each moon, etc., etc. And presumably, the more nodes that are in an area, the more expensive it's going to be to build new nodes. Now, aside from the actual production of goods, here are some other examples of things that you'll be taking from place to place if you are a trader, for example. Besides just the basic goods that get produced, you could get the basic goods, then upgrade them and tweak them and then sell them on the open market as an overclocked version of the original. Then, of course, there's unique goods that they've given some examples here, like vandal knives, rare loot and mission story rewards, things like that. And we haven't even talked about salvage and exactly how that fits into it because we just don't have a lot of information, but there will be a robust salvage system in the game as well. That about wraps it up. You now have a working knowledge of the basics of everything that we know about the Star Citizen economy. As always, you can check the description for links to our source articles, which go into much greater detail on these subjects. You can find links directly to our show notes on our website, www.talesofcitizens.com. And don't forget to check out the Tales of Citizens podcast episode number four, where we discuss the economy in much greater detail. I'm Bridger, signing off. See you in the verse, everyone.